Hello, I'm John Canalopoulos, an eye surgeon based in Athens, Greece, in New York City, New York. I'm very excited to present to you our intrinsic technique. We introduced this technique in uh, 2004, and it complies of topography-guided LASIK for hyperopia. The core concept in this is the fact that hyperopes have a significant angle kappa. This has been published in the literature, and we have a collaborative paper with the University of Ankara showing the significance of angle kappa in hypro. So traditionally, we have been performing LASIK centered on the pupil of those patients. The problem in these cases is that LASIK should be centered on the visual axis of these patients. I will show you a uh, placido disc topography map giving you the relevance between the aperture of the pupil and the actual center of the cornea of these patients and why is it relevant to center on the visual axis. We are using the Wavelight uh, platform for many years. The current version is the Refractive Sweep by Wavelight Alka, which very eloquently will perform with the FS200 laser, the femtosecond flap, which also needs to be decentered on the visual axis of the patient, which usually is nasally and slightly inferiorly, and how the uh, femtosecond will help us design this. And then the EX500 eczema laser that receives input from five topographic devices. The device we'll use the input here is from the uh, Pentacom HR, which in wavelength terms is called the Oculizer 2. So you see this attempt to perform a high hyperopic correction, uh, topography guided in order to include the deviation of angle kappa, and also close the procedure with the procedure we have also introduced, prophylactic cross-linking, LASIK extra in today's terms with the Avidra device, that we have found, and we're presenting data at this year's ASCRS uh, meeting, uh, to become extremely helpful in stabilizing the hyperopic correction, possibly by modulating the biomechanical respond, response that hyperopic eyes have after LASIK. I hope you find this presentation interesting, and I thank you very much for your attention. This is an example of a hyperopic on the pendicam, normal cornea, but if you study the placido disc images, you can see that the pupillary aperture is eccentric to the visual axis. Clearly, visual axis is skewed nasally on this right eye. We're using the refractive suite, the FS200 femto on the left, the X500 on the right, and here is a standard hyperopic correction treatment plan. You can see how the pupillary aperture, as captured by the topographer, will be in the center. Here, on the right eye, topography guided, you can clearly see the decentered place of the ablation, and more clearly here, that though is centered on the visual axis of the patient. And again, we're going to the surgery video. This is both eyes of the, this hyperopic patient. We'll see the treatment data in a few seconds. You can see we're talking about a very significant hypro. We're at a plus seven minus uh, one and a half astigmatism that we'll be treating uh, and uh, directly into surgery. The uh, patient interface uh, suction goes on right now at this moment that the FS200 uh, patient interface touches the cornea. Please note, compared to the pupil, how the ablation looks decentered to the left, which is nasal. And uh, you can also see here on the uh, report from the FS200, the actual femto flap. And now I'm showing you here the pupillary aperture and how uh, the flap is decentered nasally to match our topography guided treatment. Uh, single use irrigation spatula. I just use one instrument in the LASIK procedure, uh, carefully uh, 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 return the flap, reflect the flap onto itself, and here you can see the hyperopic ablation, and again how it fits perfectly in this uh, nine millimeter uh, femto flap, and now a drop of the riboflavin solution. We leave it uh, into the uh, uh, interface uh, for about 60 seconds. We uh, irrigate the residual, a drop of pret forte, and a uh, just an applinator to bring the flap back in place. You can see here how clearly the ablation gutter is also descended nasally compared to the pupil. And now the uh, Vidro KXL device and uh, LASIK extra 60 seconds of 30 milliwatts per square centimeters um, and a bandage lens at the end of the procedure. This is the patient the day immediately after the surgery. You can see the bandage lens and the uh, hyper-reflective interface. Um, you can see here the patient postoperative at uh, one week and at one month 
very stable refractive result, 2020 uncorrected despite of the high correction. Here on the OCT several months later, you can see the hyper-reflective interface depicting cross-linking. So here are the methods in 27 consecutive patients uh, with significant hyperopia, as you can see here, a mean of 3.25 uh, diopters. We uh, randomized one eye to be treated uh, routine LASIK and one eye to be treated LASIK extra. Here you can see the pivotal part at the end of the LASIK procedure using riboflavin within the flap, 60 second soaking and uh, 60 second treatment. And here is very important graph showing that the LASIK extra eyes show significant long-term hold of the hyperopic effect where the non-cross-linked eyes regressed. So in conclusion, in this contralateral eye study, we conclusively found that um, LASIK extra can enhance the hyperopic effect uh, in long-term follow. Again, before and after our current routine, routine in hyperopia, topography-guided and prophylactic collagen cross-linking. Thank you very much for your attention.